Hello, dearest friends, dear, dear beautiful souls of love and light. This is Nanari, Princess of the Sea, coming to you with a new video. Inspired by things that are occurring in my own personal life, as well as I've had many, many, many people coming to me and mentoring, um, having to do with relationships of all sorts, um, and also the twin soul journey and whatnot, um, I felt inspired to take some of the wisdom that has come through from source in regards to that from the master artist and um, share it all with you here in a video. This has to do with um, several things. This has to do with core wounds, balancing and healing in relationships where we change the scene and we make a new scene where dreams are coming true. And there is a way to actually do that and be that in all of our relationships. And um, I'm going to start out by sharing that healing really at its core essence, there is free from anything that is requiring to be healed. There's only love to be revealed. And Healing isn't necessarily that the damage that you experienced, whatever that is, that it never existed. It just simply means that you are no longer going to allow it to affect your life, that you've shifted it. You are, as I said, creating a new scene and making your dreams come true. So how does that translate into everyday life? Well, there's a couple of quotes by Rumi that inspired this as well. So I'm going to read those first and then um, share some further wisdom within that. The several quotes are as follows. There is a voice that doesn't use words. Listen. No words can explain how inspired words spring out of the silence. Be thirsty, heart. Seek forever without rest. Let this soundless longing hidden deep inside you be the source of every word you say. Love is not written on paper. Paper can be erased. Nor is it etched on stone. Stone can be broken. But what is inscribed on a heart, there it shall remain forever. Now it was interesting because a um, young woman who uh, I would consider my spiritual daughter, um, who I have taken under my wing and uh, began mentoring recently, and uh, her dad, who I am quite fond of, was is in part the inspiration for this video. Um, again, as I said, as well as uh, things that have occurred in my own life personally through this journey with my twin soul and um, various other relationships that I've had in all forms, not just romantic, in my life. And in this learning and growing and transforming and transmutational process, the wisdom that I've received both from the master artist as well as um, my own experience and my own heart is what I desire to share with you. Um, because this woman had come to me and she said she had experienced a lot of counseling and whatnot and she figured that she knew how to approach uh, someone in her life. And I explained to her that one of the things that is so key between divine masculine and divine feminine, now this can occur with uh, father-daughter relationship, this can occur between friends, this can occur in a romantic relationship, this can occur on the twin soul journey. This is for all relationships. And one of the things that um, many of us as the divine feminine are free from really understanding that I've also grown into on my own journey and transformed and shifted into is that of understanding what I call or what source calls man speak. 
um, really understanding the divine masculine's essence and really understanding their heart. And it really has been through the last five years, five and a half years now almost, uh, in particular with my twin soul, that I've really honed this in. Um, I've honed this in in raising my own uh, children. I have three boys uh, physically here on this earth and a daughter who's in spirit. And so in throughout this process of the, these years, being in tune to their heart, really understanding and knowing the heart of a man, um, and then really honing that in, in particular in romantic relationship and other relationships with my twin soul and, and you know, other men in my life, um, I have come to this understanding that there's a certain way that both men have been indoctrinated into and also who men are wired to be. And in that essence, we as the Divine Feminine have a hard time understanding that. Now, um, we've had some role reversals that have occurred as a result of that. And what that is, is, is that, you know, in most recent times, this is something that has occurred, you know, over millennia. But in most recent times, um, in the 20th and 21st century, what we saw was in the 20s and 30s, we saw the movement of the Divine Feminine coming into their own Divine Masculine power and standing in that Divine Masculine power to attempt to balance themselves. So you saw the women's movement and the right to vote and things of that nature coming around. Um, and then in the 1960s, we saw that for the divine masculine in the opening of the heart and coming into the love when we saw the 60s movement and the love peace joy hippie you know uh, movement that you know we all resonate at least i do anyway resonate with and into the 70s and some of us have never really ever come out of the 60s and 70s really to be honest um, in that realm and so we had a flip-flop in which the divine masculine took on the essence of the divine feminine in a lot of ways and the divine feminine in a lot of ways took on the divine masculine and so it's created a balance for us to come to the balance of the divine masculine and divine feminine within yet at the same moment in relationships of all sorts and in particular romantic relationships and twin soul relationships there's this this con constant battling basically because we are in our opposite roles and so it's very key that we shift this back into balance so that the divine masculine can come into really being who they are and yet still have the aspects of the divine feminine within him. And then the divine feminine also coming back into who she is and also still embodying some of those divine masculine qualities when it is needed. And so one of the things that is um, key when it comes to this is for us as the divine feminine to understand what I said earlier is called man speak or uh, divine masculine speak. And that is the divine masculine, their core essence of who they really are is that they are the pillar of infinite consciousness. They are the pillar of presence. They are to be, just be, be in this presence. Now the divine feminine is the uh, taking that being and bringing it into manifestation, bringing it into form. That's why we as the divine feminine give birth um, into, into having physical beings on this earth, as well as giving birth to projects. Now, this, this goes without saying that we have both the divine feminine and the divine masculine within us. And to take it even a step further, really, um, we are androgynous beings. And as a, androgynous beings, we are neither divine masculine or divine feminine. We just are. We are just spirit. But in this earthly realm of existence, in the life experience, we do have divine masculine and divine feminine because we do reside in a field of duality, which this field of duality is also part of the oneness. So it's the duality in the one and the one in the duality. It's both and. So within this, divine masculine in general, because of being this pillar of consciousness and being this pillar, pillar of presence, normally have very few words to share. 
Now, when they are in the divine feminine, they open their heart and then they're able to share with us. And, and we as the divine feminine thrive on connection. And so we embrace that and we love that about our divine masculine. But as a rule, and of course, again, there are exceptions to the rule, but as a rule, divine masculine are the pillar of presence, the pillar of consciousness. And so oftentimes they will say very few things. And because we as the divine feminine, we resonate so much and thrive on constant connection and communication, we take that the wrong way. We take it because we have that core wound that is within us, which is both in the divine feminine and the divine masculine in differing ways, having to do with rejection and abandonment uh, issues. Now, this can come from this life or it can come from other lives. And then it also goes all the way back to source energy in which we have this illusion, if you will, of when we first began as source energy and then branched out into the twin souls that we are and then branched out into the many souls that we are, that what happened was a separation. That is actually an illusion. It is actually an expansion. We were expanding our consciousness from source energy rather than separating. So this whole rejection and abandonment for both the divine feminine and the divine masculine becomes a core wound and issue that we are being asked to heal within our relationships. And it is through our relationships that we do this. Um, as Neil Donald Walsh says uh, in his quote um, uh, that I've put in the many uh, videos that I've done here on YouTube, it is about... Um, you know, it's through relationships that we actually exist here on this earth. And it's about, uh, not about someone who can complete us, but someone who we can share our whole perfect and completeness with. And so we come into that balance as we, as the divine feminine, come to understand our divine masculine in that the way they communicate is through very few words and that we are to be free from taking it personally when they are either silent or say very few words, we are to heal that abandonment and rejection that we feel within us. Um, we often feel that, you know, if, if our divine masculine says, you know, uh, just says yes, or yes, honey, or, you know, doesn't say anything, just sits there, we somehow take that as a rejection that, oh, he doesn't understand how I feel and, and I don't feel, you know, uh, nurtured and I don't feel validated and I don't feel loved. It's when we come to understand that this is who the divine masculine is. They are this consciousness of presence and it's actually a man's silence is the greatest gift that he can actually give you. For what it means truly is that he's unconditionally loving you. And he's unconditionally loving you because he is listening to you in the silence, loving you without stating a word or a judgment or ridicule or any other things that you have as the divine feminine built up in your head of thoughts that you've placed in there that are not really who you are. So silence is actually the most beautiful gift that our divine masculine gives us. Now again, that's not to say that you divine uh, masculine please we ask for you to open your heart to us because in opening your heart and being in your divine feminine we love you all the more in being that raw real vulnerable and from the heart in sharing with us and one of the key aspects of that is in that form of rejection and this is for the divine feminine, you know, we are in this phase right now of this shift of consciousness where we are uh, being aware of the fact that the divine feminine is now to come back into her power. Well, that power is not about power of ego. It's about the power of love. And in that being in the power of love, we are to be that nurturing essence. We have spent so long, well over almost a hundred years now since the women's movement, um, it being in this masculine, you know, we're, we're warriors in a sense that, you know, we have to stand up and be as the divine masculine warrior and, and, you know, um, take care of ourselves and whatnot. And that's wonderful. When you surrender into the essence and truly trust a man, it's truly trusting him fully 
And in that vulnerability, we are to nurture and be free from rejecting our divine masculine when they do come to us and share from the heart. We are to embrace them and nurture them and encourage that. And sometimes we push our divine masculine to open their hearts before they are ready because we, we long to be in that sense of being in that in that sense of connection and we thrive on that and so often when we don't feel nourished by that direct connection we take it personally and so it's really us as the divine feminine being free from taking it personally when our divine masculine isn't saying anything it doesn't mean that that he doesn't love you it doesn't mean that he doesn't care it doesn't mean that he doesn't have anything uh, to say to you or um, that he's somehow trying to push you away. It just simply means that he is being that divine consciousness, that divine resonance of presence. And if you know anything about really being in tune, when a man is really in tune with a woman, he will be that. He will be that presence. And so divine masculine, I invite you to come into that uh, essence when you are that essence of presence that's how you actually literally open your woman up that's how we open as divine feminine and blossom we're free from you know some women will say oh well, i wish he brought me flowers and i wish he would spend time talking to me and i wish that that you know he would do gestures or you know things of that nature and at the heart of it when we are really in the divine feminine that we truly are we require none of that what we actually require is the divine masculine total utter presence of being present in the moment with us looking at the woman you love divine masculine seeing into her being in tune with her standing in front of her without wavering without glancing away just strong um kind of like uh you know if you want to um give uh, some sort of a, a reference for a movie type like like um uh, keanu reeves in the matrix or in the lake house when he stands and he looks at sandra bullock with that just utter presence of being in the moment with her without having to say a word with his eyes just pouring through her and seeing into her heart that's your divine masculine power and when you're doing that it just seeps from you when you're being that and as you move towards your divine feminine and this again can apply in a romantic relationship or this can apply with a mother father uh, relationship uh, sorry mother daughter relationship a uh, uh, father daughter relationship it can be any relationship the divine masculine is being asked to be this divine presence of really being present in the moment to whatever is occurring right now with that woman but in particular with romantic relationship when or twin soul relationship when you can be in the presence the divine masculine being fully in his presence that may startle the divine feminine at first she may not feel uh you know confident in herself so she may giggle a little bit she may feel a little um, uneasy perhaps but it's what you're doing is you're pouring your essence of presence and it will melt all of those blocks and all of those energies it will knock down the walls and blocks and she creates this new essence this new scene and if she tests you we as the divine feminine will test the divine masculine you're not to get involved in the drama not in the drama or the stories of the moment because we as the divine feminine we look to you for you to be unwavering that unwavering consciousness no reaction just presence being fully aware and fully focused only on us as the divine feminine no squealing no performing no losing yourself in your pleasure 
just being that total presence because then your pleasure is the divine feminine's pleasure. It's our pleasure. When you stay focused on the divine feminine, not mentally or physically or emotionally wavering, you are there then to pervade the consciousness of who you are, of the universe pouring through you. And when you are that, you open us up as the divine feminine. And oftentimes us as the divine feminine don't realize that. And when you, when the divine masculine does that, you open us up as the divine feminine more deeply and widely than you have ever done before. It, it takes us and brings us to places that we ourselves as the divine feminine may not even know. We just, we just feel that ecstasy and, and it, even if we cry or we scream or we thrash about, we'll then test you in that resolve. And we are just simply asking that one question. Can you stay with me, and be with me through everything? Can you witness my pain, agony, ecstasy, and not waver? We want our men to be fully present with us because when the divine masculine is fully present and can be there with us through everything, no matter what, and not waver. That is the greatest gift that the divine masculine can give the divine feminine. It beyond us wanting to feel heard or wanting to know that you have done something grand. We want to feel your presence and know that you're fully present with us in the moment, no matter what. And in that, that makes us feel safe and comfortable to trust you, to trust you fully and to fully open up. So when that happens, this provides the gateway for true love to, emb to embody. It becomes, it becomes a way in which we bridge the gap, we create a new scene where the dreams come true of the relationships that we've always desired. And when the Divine Feminine is open in that essence, then we are free from ever rejecting you, Divine Masculine. And that is so key for the Divine Feminine to understand. But when our Divine Masculine comes to us in that fully being present, we are to be free from rejecting. We are to put aside the fact that we may feel abandoned or rejected ourselves because uh, our divine masculine man isn't saying anything. We have to push past that and we have to see, we are to see that they are being that other utter presence. Because in that silence, when we are free from taking it personally, there is a deep power and a deep love that entangles our hearts and a deep oneness that entangles our hearts, both from a romantic standpoint and then also within all relationships. Because as the Cherokee proverb says, a woman's highest calling is to lead a man to his soul so as to unite him with source. And a man's highest calling is to protect woman so that she is free to walk the earth unharmed. So as we stand in that presence of the divine masculine and as we, the divine feminine, open up, we are then able to be our highest calling and call you, the divine masculine, to your soul, bringing you to source in each moment. And then this inactivates the warrior within the divine masculine. Now the divine masculine warrior is not just about going out and fighting some battles. That's the survivalism mechanism. And that in some form or fashion will still be here from an earthly perspective. And it's beautiful in its own right. Really what it's about is being vigilant 
not on the battlefield anymore or not in the common marketplace, but being vigilant and being able to protect woman so that she can walk the earth freely and being able to take care of her, not from a caretaking standpoint, not from a needs being met. That's an earthly relationship, spiritual partnership in all forms, whatever the relationship is, and in particularly romantic relationship and twin soul relationship, spiritual partnership is about uh, taking care of one another, coming from an essence of being that divine presence, and then also bringing each other to each other's soul in each moment. Really living from the soul. And living from the soul is about having no agenda. It's not about what's in it for me. It's about what's in the benefit for all. What's in the benefit for the one that I love? What can I give? How can I serve? How can I take care of you in that way? What can I give you? That's what the caretaking is about. That's what the essence of the warrior is really about for the divine masculine. So when we understand this, then we understand the reasons why a man, the, the divine masculine man, often has a hard time opening his heart because he has been taught, most men have been taught from a very early age that it's not okay to be open. It's not okay to be vulnerable. Uh, we as women and then other people in general in society, men as well, have rejected him for being such. And so he's afraid often to open his heart. And the same can be said for the divine feminine. There are divine feminine who also feel the same way, who have been treated that way. And so what really is the essence of shifting it for both the divine feminine and the divine masculine comes in the essence of healing that inner wound of rejection by being free from rejecting yourself first and then also being free from rejecting each other. No matter which way you come to each other, unconditionally love and accept one another unconditionally in the moment for whatever it is that's being occurring, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're experiencing. And it, the key is for the divine feminine and the divine masculine to really understand this. And this is how we come together in co-creation in relationships of all kinds. It is within this understanding that shifts things. So for the Divine Feminine, as a bridge, if you are free from still feeling that divine connection with your divine masculine and you still feel the need to have that com complete nurturance divine a divine masculine can definitely be nurturing it's not that they can't it's just simply that they do it in a different way than we do because they do it through action oftentimes that action will be through um for instance, like uh, posting something on Facebook that is related to something that you're discussing and noticing that, um, that he did such. Um, it's really coming from a place from, from appreciation that we see beyond our five senses, beyond this 3D reality, and into the heart and see what the Divine Masculine is really giving to the Divine Feminine what the man is really giving to you. So if you're looking for a constant nurturing though, as the divine feminine, and you don't feel that you're receiving it from your divine masculine in any form, then connect with other divine feminine. You know, if, if you feel that you want that actual nurturing essence within you, that's totally fine. If you have something exciting that's happened in your life and you want to share it, share it with your divine masculine, definitely. But be free from having an expectation that he's going to respond a certain way. And be free from taking it personally, knowing that he's being that consciousness of presence with you. And so go and share it with your divine feminine friends and, and let them nurture you and say, oh my God, that's great. That's fantastic. I'm so happy for you. Wow, wow, wow. And also for the divine feminine to give that 
to the divine masculine too. Um, and this is also another way that the divine feminine, you as women can respect and honor your men is when they come to you with something like, for instance, just recently, um, a dear friend of mine who's here locally, who I mentor, and he is a dear friend, he recently dug up a rock on his property. And rather than rejecting him, which I would never do anyway, I thought the rock was really cool anyhow, um, because that's just how I felt anyhow. But I also gave him that nurturing essence, that nurturing support to say, hey, way to go. And our divine masculine needs to hear that. They need to hear more than the way to go. They need to hear specifically what it is that we appreciate within them because the divine masculine is wired in their consciousness to not only be that divine consciousness of presence, but also wired to please us as the divine feminine. That's who they are. And it gives them great joy and wanting them to do more for you when you appreciate their efforts of what they do, even if it's the smallest of things, like I explained about my friend in the rock. He wasn't doing that necessarily for me. It was for him on his own journey, but I appreciated him in it. The number one thing is to appreciate the way that the divine masculine loves us. We don't always see it that way. And this often hurts the divine masculine greatly because they are, um, they are action beings in that sense of presence. This is how they show their love. And so if, if they are, um, let's say if they are buying something for you or if they are um, taking care of you uh, financially speaking, or if they come to you with a gift or if they post something on Facebook, again, that's related to something you've talked about, or, um, or as an example, um, my twin soul, and I talked about this, I think, in one of my other videos, um, my twin soul, I had, I have, and I really have a love for Pacquiao Bell. Uh, Canon in D happens to be one of my favorite classical pieces. The actually all time, my all time favorite classical piece is Canon in D, as well as Ode to Joy. And all I did one day um, a couple of years ago was I just sent him a video of Canon in D and said, This is one of my favorites. Now, this was in July of that year, a couple of years ago. And then all it, it took a couple of months, but, but in October, so several months later, he remembered that, all that time later, and he wrote a song called Be Still for Love Whispers. And Be Still for Love Whispers is written, and he, he had texted me and said, I wrote it in the Pacquiao Bell type of um, resonance. And it was his way of saying to me, you know, I did this because of you. And there's often times that our divine masculine will do things like that. And we as the divine feminine don't pay attention. We don't notice. Now, of course, I did. And immediately I remembered and, you know, appreciated him and thanked him profusely for it because it was his way of honoring me and loving me. And so oftentimes we as the divine feminine don't notice that. And so it's it's important so very vital and the reverse can be true as well the divine masculine you know we too desire to be honored for what we give to you as well and cherished so noticing those things and saying those things to the woman that you love or your daughter or your friend who is a woman you know hey i really appreciate that you took the time to you know uh, make that video or you know i really appreciate you know the time that you took to to make that supper for me it was really good when we appreciate each other in that way that's the number one thing that we desire both divine feminine and divine masculine, but in particular for the divine masculine because they are wired to please a woman. That is their, their wired essence of who they are. And so it will have them want to do more and have them want to open up more to you and share their heart when you appreciate what, you give, what they give to you. And it hurts them when you don't. Listening unconditionally to one another in the silence 
appreciating the essence and again like i said being being specific in that appreciation not just saying hey you did a great job on that video or hey you did a great job what is it that you really liked about it or loved about it that your divine masculine has done or if it's the divine masculine what the divine feminine's done for you be specific i really like the fact that you posted what you did on your Facebook wall because it really shows that you love me because chemtrails are, are really affecting me right now and the fact that you posted uh, something like that shows me that that you are um, really appreciating the fact that this is this is what I'm going through right now and it's affecting me and you know you don't think that I notice these things but I do notice them and thank you because it's your way of showing me that you love me and I appreciate it and I appreciate you or I really appreciate that you took the trash out for me uh, when I didn't have time you didn't think I noticed but I did and it's those little things that you do that really make my life easier and I really appreciate that you're so in tune to my heart, honey. And to know what it is that I need without me having to say it or without me knowing, you know, myself perhaps that that's what I need. Thank you. When you can be specific in your gratitude for the Divine Masculine particularly, also Divine Feminine too, but when you're specifically for the Divine Masculine, that says to them, hey, wow, she did notice, wow what I am doing is working. Wow. You know, I, I, I'm doing, I'm doing what I'm meant to do. And I want to do that more. I want to please her more. And so that will open things up for him to share his heart. And then you won't have to always be running to your divine feminine friends, you know, for that nurturing and support, because you are giving first of your essence. How may I give? How may I serve? When we're able to do that, that's what opens us up on both sides. Now, the key to this is also, yes, if you see something that is occurring in a behavior in, a, in the Divine Feminine or the Divine Masculine that is upsetting to you, calling it to their attention, but in a loving way. And the reason that I say that is just because none of us want to be told what to do. None of us want to be put down or harmed in any way. And when you truly love yourself, and I have many videos about this and many articles about this, so I'm not going to get into the whole loving yourself thing. You can look at my videos and, and my notes on Facebook and all my articles and all of that for that. But when you really love yourself, then you seek not to harm another. And nor do you harm yourself, nor do you reject yourself. When you fully love yourself, you, you fully embrace yourself and another. And so when you come across in something that is upsetting you, there is a certain manner in which you go about it. Um, just recently, I uh, did so with my twin soul on something that I had written to him. And what I wrote to him was, um, in a loving way, I said, may I lovingly suggest something to you, my love? And when we come from that essence, that opens the heart rather than saying, you did this and you did that, or I can't believe you said that, or, you know, what have you. See the difference. And we're coming from a place of compassion and saying, may I, may I lovingly suggest something to you? Or I invite you to see something. Can you please take a look at this? And this also opens the door because the pain that often the divine masculine has been through of being rejected and hurt by other women and other people i invite you divine masculine to please be free from allowing that to cloud your way to love with any woman in your life because a woman just as much as a man wants to know that you love and support her and honor her for all that she gives to you as much as for all you give to her. And by you giving such to the woman you love and to all women, and by the divine feminine giving such to all men and the man that she loves, that in turn then heals a 
And then that giving comes back to you, not because it's an expectation that you're giving because you think you're going to receive it back, but simply because that's how the universe works. When you give, it comes back to you and it comes back to you 10,000 fold. And so this is how you heal those core wounds of rejection and abandonment that are in, in each one of us as a core source wound and then from other relationships and from other lives and other, other things that have happened to us because it helps just meld away. It melts all those blocks and walls away. It knocks them all down. And the other thing from that is an understanding of being patient. Being patient not only with yourself, but being patient with another. God, source, love, the master artist, whatever you so choose to call spirit, all that is, whatever you so choose to call this source energy, is infinitely patient is infinitely unconditionally loving, is infinitely unconditionally accepting where you are, who you are, where you're at in the moment. Never saying, I don't love you. Never saying, I won't be with you. Never saying that you're wrong or you're bad. Source is not that way, ever. Source is always embracing. Source is always providing. Source always sees you as source. As God, as love. Love sees you as love. So why can we not treat one another that way? Moving beyond the circumstances of if somebody's lashing out at you in hurt, in pain, and seeing them for who they really are, for the God and Goddess, the Princess, the Troubadour, they are in their own right. And then lifting them up. And so being patient with yourself in those moments that you falter and being patient with another when they falter because from a physiological standpoint it takes anywhere between 21 to 30 days minimum of consistently shifting behavior of being a new behavior for the brain synapses to shift and oftentimes we're not consistent we go back and forth and we falter right and so when we do that it takes longer for a behavior to shift so having that infinite patience that Source has with us, having that infinite unconditional love and acceptance that Source has with us in each moment, showing each other that we love each other despite or in spite of the fact that you're being cruel to one another. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying that this is, I'm not talking about, um, relationships that are abusive. If you are in a position where you are in a, an abusive relationship that is emotionally, financially, spiritually, sexually, uh, physically abusive in any way, shape, or form, then you may want to leave that relationship and I honor that within you. Okay, and I honor that you take the steps necessary to love yourself, whether you're divine masculine or divine feminine, to leave that situation. I myself have been involved in such in my own family and also um, in uh, my former marriage as well. And so have, have the love within yourself to leave that. So I'm not talking about this. I'm just talking about other relationships and romantic relationships in which there's a struggle that can be worked through with love by knocking down those walls and blocks. And the reason I say that is this, I'm going to read something to you that came through me both based upon experience in my own life and also of what source master artist brought through me as well. And I, I named it as unknown, but it really came through me from source. And it says this, Loving someone unconditionally means that you love even that dark side. And that dark side is that programming, that lashing out, that hurtful, wounded inner child that I'm speaking of, you know, here in this video. Deep down, a man is, as John Lennon put it in the song Woman, the little child inside of the man, who all he wants is to be loved. All any man deep in his heart wants is to know that he is loved, honored, appreciated, and cherished. 
A man wants to know that no matter how dark he is or how fucked up he does things or is, that all the same, she loves him. I don't care who the man is or if in ego he will deny such, but to a man, the approval of the woman he loves is like one of the most important things ever to that man. And a man who feels he doesn't deserve that love will test the woman he loves over and over again for her to prove her love for him. Our task as the woman he loves is to continue to be there for him, love him unconditionally, bumps, bruises, and all. Love the whole of him, all of him. Hold him, that scared little boy who is the man in your arms. Hold him and say, I love you and it is okay. And you can do it over and over again, no matter how much he fights you or says, let me go. Love him all the more. Love him from all the love within you in which you love yourself as whole, perfect, complete, and beautiful being that you are. And show him that he is this as well. Through loving him as you love yourself, sharing your completeness with him. Allow your arms to be his surrender and freedom. No matter how much he kicks and screams, love him all the same. Love him into healing. Love him into freedom. For with enough love, anything can be healed. With enough love, anything is possible. When we're in that healing place, and we can come from that resonance, and that quote is just as much for the divine masculine as it is for the divine feminine. When you can truly love from that place, in the silence, hearing another's heart, hearing the truth of them and their being, of where they are on the journey, understanding and knowing that where they are is where they are. And it is okay, it is the truth of where they are on the journey in that moment honoring where another is at and respecting them for sharing their heart rather than rejecting. For there is never anything wrong or bad about where you are. And I want you to know that although sometimes I may not like what you have to say or resonate with what you have to say, it's simply where you're at, and it's the truth of your being in this moment. And I do honor you for where you're at, even if I don't resonate in the same place that you do, the same resonance that you do. For true freedom is about allowing yourself and others to be who they are and where they are in each moment and to be okay with that. That is where true love resides. That is where the healing of these core wounds and the balancing comes in. And one of the other essences that the divine masculine is to understand about the divine feminine is we are wild women. We are wild free spirits, emotional creatures, like the flow and river of the sea. We are going to feel what we feel in the moment. And this is true for the divine masculine when they are in their divine feminine essence. And to be okay with that in that moment and to know that what we're saying is just being said in the moment, the truth of our being in the moment, that doesn't mean that it's going to be there forever. It's one thing that I've had to come to understand about my divine masculine, my twin soul. Just because he says something in the moment doesn't mean that it's forever, it's just how he feels in that moment. And that's okay. And I show him that I love him and honor him and respect him 
when I honor the truth of his being in the moment, even if I don't like it, what he's saying, it's just what's true in the moment. It doesn't necessarily mean it's forever because we are infinitely changing creatures. The one thing that doesn't ever change though is love and the love is always there. Forever and a day, it's always there. And the last piece that I wish to share with you for the Divine Feminine, that is something that is so very key for the Divine Feminine to understand in this balance, is the missing piece that so many men have yet to put together is that first and foremost, the Divine Masculine is to be in their mission. They are both the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine are to be married to Source first, to be married to God, Spirit, Master Artist, Love, all that is to Source first. That is the first and foremost relationship, then the relationship of love within, then the mission and the purpose, and then relationship in romantic form and in all relationships. That's the four tiers. Marriage with source first, marriage and union within, mission and purpose, and then giving to all in being that love in relationships, romantic and otherwise. And so it's the divine feminine who understands this as well and understands that there are moments when the divine masculine is going to be in their cave, so to speak, doing their mission, being their mission, whatever that is. For my twin soul, it's the music, it's him being the leader in, in giving the message that he does through his song and through his films and through things that he does on Facebook and things that he writes and, and other things of that nature. And that's the core essence of who he is as his mission. And what's always been there between us is that I have always understood that. And when he takes moments to be in his cave, so to speak, I don't freak out and say, oh my God, he doesn't love me. Oh my God, he's not with me. Oh my God, you know, I don't freak out. I learned that and embodied that essence with my sons um, in raising them. We have always been in tune, both of us, um, in our hearts, me with my boys and my boys with me. We've been so in tune that we know that it used to be when I was raising them that, you know, I'd go towards their door and I would just have this intuitive feeling, okay, wait, they're in the middle of something, I shouldn't knock on the door. And I wouldn't. And those times when I didn't um, heed that intuition and I did knock on the door and come in, they were kind of like, hey, mom, I'm in the middle of something. And it was like, okay, I get it. And I walked out and they knew the same thing for me that, hey, you know, I'm involved with my mission and purpose and, and I'm in the middle of doing something and they honored and respected that truth in the moment. But that didn't mean that I didn't love them. It didn't mean that I wasn't there for them. It just meant that for that time being, I wasn't able to be available in that sense, but my heart is always with them. And so I honed that in even more so with my twin soul and in all my relationships of understanding that balance. And it's so very key for the divine feminine to understand that he isn't abandoning you when he's in his cave. He's got a mission and purpose. Now, the flip side of that is, is divine masculine, please, in those moments when you come out of your cave, and my twin soul is very good at doing this, touch base with your divine feminine. Show them that you love them and say, hey, I'm here in some form or fashion, in your own way of just letting your Divine Feminine know that you're here and you love them and that your presence is there. It goes a long way to show us that you still care. In that marriage, as I said, the four-tiered essence of being married to Source first, being married within Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine balance within then having your mission and purpose, and then having romantic relationship and relationships with all. When we're in that resonance, that's when divine relationship works. All one needs to do is look at Michael and Ricky Beckwith and how beautiful they do so. Deva Pramal and Mitan, how beautiful they embody this. They are, both of them are twin souls, couples, 
that embody this essence of those four tiers, those four resonances, so beautifully, the four essences, so beautifully, in a divine balance. To know that, okay, they may be gone from each other, divine, uh, sorry, Michael and Ricky may be gone from each other for a day or two because they're off giving their message and being their, their mission and purpose, but they come back at the end of the day and nurture and love one another and appreciate one another. And the, the beauty of that, that the divine masculine hasn't put together yet is that you can, there it's both and. You can have your mission, divine masculine, and be with the woman you love. And in fact, it's, it's pertinent, it's important in this shift in consciousness that we're in right now, that divine partnership be about co-creating together and cre co-creating with the universe in your divine mission and purpose, having your individual uh, creations and then co-creating together as well. And so you can have and be both. You can have your mission and purpose and also be with the woman you love. The woman you love is not then a distraction. She's an enhancement to the very essence. Again, just like Michael and Ricky Beckwith, just like Deva, Pramal, and Mitan are. And us understanding is the divine feminine that we are to be okay with those moments when our divine masculine is taking those times to be in their cave. And in that, what happens is, is that you bam, as Source has given it to me, you be a magnet, uh, you bam, be a magnet, and you draw each other to each other. Um, as the quote from Rumi says, your task is not to seek love, but to merely seek and find all the barriers within yourself that ha you have built against it. And so once you find all these barriers and you knock down all those walls and blocks and making a new scene where your dream is coming true, that's when the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine can come together as one. And this is where true union is, where true partnership is, where true co-creation is, where you're free from possessing one another, where you just want the best for each other. And you allow the freedom for each other to be able to receive that from the universe in all ways and through each other. And you're in your appreciation of one another. And so then it's a marriage of the two, a union of the two. And the relationship then becomes a relationship of being lovers in a celebration willingly entered into as love directs it. Freedom being the foundation of this awakened couple in romantic relationship. And this is where the deepest and sacredness of bonds of true love can freely entangle one another into oneness. That when you're in an unawakened earthly relationship, just cannot enter into it. So in this essence, I close by sharing with you that what you seek then is seeking you, as Rumi says. And it becomes a beautiful essence of being free from attachment or detachment. Because as Rumi says as well, in between the right doings and the wrong doings, there is a field. I will meet you there. Which means in between attachment, where we feel that we just can't be without this person and we're feeling so abandoned and rejected, in between that and the right doings where we're fully spiritual and just totally being married to source and that's it. In between those two extremes, when we're in one extreme or the other, that brings an imbalance or out of balanceness. In between those, there's this field. I will meet you there, Rumi says. I will meet you there. That field is this beingness, this lovingness this essence where we appreciate one another, where balance is, where the divine masculine has his mission and purpose and is also being with the woman he loves. It is where the four essences, the four resonances of being married to source first, being married and in union 
within and balance of divine masculine and divine feminine within, then having your mission and purpose, and then also having relationship. That's where it all is. That's where you make a new scene where dreams are coming true. I love you. I appreciate you. I honor you. I respect you. And I love you. Espada.